name is Councillor Anita Leach and I'm the chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right is the Councillor Solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the Councillor's Planning Officers, Highway Engineer and Environmental Health Officer who will present the applications this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this <coughs> evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. In the case of we have two qualified petitions, each will be allowed to speak for five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak for as long as they wish, however, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any future debate that follows. The application will then be open to debate and, and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda will be adjusted subject to the numbers of people who have been uh, who are attending here this evening. Um, if a site visit is requested and approved by the committee this evening, then the matter will not be discussed any further tonight. The matter will be discussed at a subsequent meeting once the planning committee have visited the site. Anyone here this evening for that item are welcome to leave the meeting if you wish. declarations of interest. Um, I personally would like to uh, say that I've got a personal interest in item 7 by virtue of I live just a couple of doors away from the property. Also personal interest in items 8 and 15 by virtue of being a board councillor. But I have an open mind to these applications. Are there any other declarations of interest?
if there's anybody uh, who would now like to leave the room, because we won't be discussing those matters further, then please feel free to do so, but you're more than welcome to stay. Yeah. Just for clarification uh, a bit of confusion. You're not going to discuss the Ingleborough Road or Charlie Road tonight. I will just read them out now, Thank you for that. Okay, so it's item four, which is Hillside Road, Tramia, which is going to be deferred. Item twelve, which is Blockbuster Video. In terms of building a strong economy, the government wants the planning system to do all it can to support sustainable economic growth. Revitalising the local economy is a fundamental part of the urban regeneration strategy which is pursued through the Unitary Development Plan and Emerging Core Strategy. The proposal will provide for uses within B1 and B8, light industry and warehousing, in an area designated for such uses. The proposed development will provide for up to 45 new jobs on Wirral within maritime, engineering, renewable energy and construction sectors. In order to enable all the functions this development would entail to take place, a short section of the waterfront, approximately 40 metres, will be closed to the general public for safety, security and operational reasons. Since policy C01 expects access to the coastal zone to be preserved and or enhanced, this element of the proposal constitutes departure from the development plan. However, the closure will not impinge on the historic walks on this section of the promenade. It does not uh, maintain, as it does not maintain a route through to the south as it terminates at the adjoining commercial, commercial property, uh, which is already gated and closed to any public access. Access to the main promenade leading to Woodside and beyond is maintained by the existing footpath between this site and the perimeter of Priory Wharf. Taken with the redevelopment opportunities of the site, the investment in the area and the potential creation of additional employment, 
these factors are considered to weigh in favour of the development and outweigh the small element of the waterfront that would be closed off. Prior to the law, a mixed residential development immediately to the north of the site comprises four storeys and is elevated from the application site. The nearest corner of the proposed building is some 23 metres away from the nearest ground floor apartment on Priory Wharf. This distance taken with existing boundary screening and the elevated position of Priory Wharf is considered to minimise any potential impact on residential community. The predominant surrounding land use is one of mixed light industry and the proposals are considered to be acceptable and compatible with the site allocated in the unitary development plan. <coughs> Concerns have been raised by the impact the proposals would have on a number of charter boat operators in use on the river and operating on occasions from the slipway. However, it is important to note that this is neither authorised nor licensed, and as such, any potential impact on these businesses can carry limited, if any, weight. The proposal accords with national and local planning policy and seeks permission for a development for which the use of land is allocated in the unitary development plan. The proposal would make a significant and positive contribution to supporting economic growth and employment generation. The design of the proposed building seeks to minimise impacts on communities for adjoining land uses, notably the adjoining residential development at Priory Wall. It is not considered the proposal will affect the historic fabric of the locality, and given the significant economic benefits the proposal will bring, together with regeneration benefits of the site and employment opportunities created, it is considered the proposals are acceptable and are recommended for approval. There are two qualifying petitions. Thank you, Matthew. Um, as we have uh, two qualifying petitions for this application, both of the applicants will be able to speak to one representative um, for each of the applications. Um, so would the first one like to come forward to speak?
real community control they would take on our security. So the government would be paid yearly, would go to our council, into our council's pockets. Surely that is to have both of my and to have the will. So we live by these rules and I feel that this development will reduce the price of our policy because of this we have difficulty, um, have difficulty paying off the additives. So we this um, building so close from the car park, you cannot understand how um, it will impact. I know the primary water is set higher, but if you look down on that, you will see that those people on the other the waste side will only see the wall of that building. And, um, this is our diner. You spend all your life on the thing and if you think you found a lovely place to retire. And then, <coughs> although you're living within all these rules, an uh, uh, industrial unit is in front. In the only spare and empty area in our left, that's left in our area for people to enjoy. And that is my problem. specialist software house selling computer programs which find errors in other people's computer programs. LDRA was founded in 1975 and moved to Monksbury in year 2000. Whilst no one is entitled to a view, LDRA saw premises which were either spectacular themselves or had a spectacular view. The only building we could find on the Mersey either side was this building in Monksbury which is a little oasis. The building is ordinary, but the view is spectacular. <coughs> Our visitors are the top technical and management executives from some of the world's top great companies in avionics, space, automotive, and medical devices. In the last year, we had 60 visitors from Chinese, 30 Koreans, 35 US, and many others from Europe. LDRA also has offices in Bangalore, Paris, four in the United States, and one office in Newbury in Berkshire. If this planning application is approved, LDRA will have to move. Our customers will not be impressed by a noisy, dirty, industrial marine dock. Just the process of building this dock means we have to move up something like 300 computers out of the building. The dust will kill them. If LDRA moves to Newbury, we can obtain a spectacular building, ex Vodafone, immediately, and the Newbury Council will make enormous efforts to help. Thus, 45 very specialist, very highly paid jobs will leave Wirral almost immediately, along with £6 million in local spend. LDRA recently doubled its office space at Monks Ferry in order to site a software <coughs> test laboratory. We already have set one up in India. This laboratory will initially house some 30 software engineers, some of whom are already recruited, but we can move them. Long term, we expect to expand this laboratory as new, rigorous, <coughs> international software standards kick in. LDRA is therefore an expanding company in a much sought after technological area. It is not dependent on government handouts, nor is its future at the whim of that. LDRA also has a site gate opening onto the car park. This gate has been in continuous use for some 20 years, and we failed to see how this fits in with this. We support local industries. Our web design and uh, incorporation is all handled locally. Graphics arts, financial services companies, including 
artists. We pay artists to paint pictures of the Wirral, which we give to our international customers <coughs> because they give us gifts. So LDI's position is clear. We have to go. The historical aspects of Monk Ferry are mind-blowing. Monks working on the first ever chartered ferry across any river in Britain, let alone in Mersey, rulers <coughs> and jealously guard this site. Even the slipway predates 1840. The ferry was probably in continuous use well into the 1850s. The Birkenhead Historical Society is against this proposal. And to try and help, LDRA a year ago, two years ago, if you pardon, offered to buy that car park because the council was short of money, but we were not given the opportunity. The car park is erratically used and can be full one day and empty on another. Most visitors stay close to their cars and hence do not bother to pay. They walk to that. Only the walkers pay. They leave their cars and walk away. It is always full during river festivals. And finally, I find it ironic that after 800 odd use of boats that the council officers should feel that that's an inappropriate use of the site. Thank you. Thank you. Would the applicants or agent like to make representation in support of their application? Thank you. Do you need check? Two more votes speaking against himself and the council Oh, so, sorry. Would you like to come forward? Sorry. Jean, the, the board council has come after the applicants. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could we have the applicants or agents on, please? Sorry for the confusion. Those were only available at certain states of the tide. 
they're only available with certain conditions, uh, and that makes it very difficult for uh, the vessels to come in and out, which is why they want a, a marine structure which is within the river. Um, and this is a, a feature which is occurring more. It's similar to the, the uh, uh, much larger scale structures being built over the seaport to allow vessels there access to berths within the river. Um, the, the wind industry, the offshore wind industry, and uh, offshore industries are a major part of the, the economy. And I think people will have seen that the Laird's Yard has been very busy over the last few years. The huge yellow steel tubes have been there, part of the construction that's been going on for the Winter War Wind Farm. Uh, I think uh, Laird's wish to be a very important part. They wish to put, employ people in high skill, uh, high value uh, sectors that support the, the, the long-term aims of world to, to be a major player and a world-class uh, player in, in uh, the offshore industries, whether in shipbuilding, ship repairing, or offshore wind farms. Thank you.